Hello everyone, this is just an attempt uh, to do anatomy in short videos on my Insta page so that I will be able to cover most of the topics in anatomy. I will be doing this session with the help of the diagrams mostly from Vishram Singh so that uh, it will be easy for you to follow my lectures. Uh, so this will be my first lecture and I am starting with abdomens because most of you are having abdomen uh, in your college. So uh, please let me know if it is useful to you only if I get uh, a good number of responses I will continue with this because it will otherwise it will be of no use. So please let me know whether it is useful to you. So let's begin with abdomen. So when we start with abdomen we will be starting with the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, when we talk about the uh, anterior abdominal wall we have to know the important landmarks. Why we have to know the important landmarks is because uh, when a patient comes to you with the history of pain abdomen, uh, you have to refer that patient. You cannot simply say that that patient is having pain or the lower part, upper part like that. So in order to assess properly, you need to know the important landmarks of the anterior abdominal wall and you also have to know what are the underlying structures. Then only you can uh, diagnose a condition in a patient. So for that you have to know first of all what do you mean by the anterior abdominal wall or how will you explain the extent of the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, so uh, let's see. We will start with the topic abdomen, anterior abdominal wall. So just focus on this diagram. What are the important landmarks which you will be able to make out? You can see the cephoid process here. On above, you have the cephoid process. Below, exactly in the midline, you have the pubic symphysis. So let's see the important landmarks now. On either side of the cephoid process, you have the costal margin. And what are the ribs contributing to the formation of costal margin? You have the 7, 8, 9 and 10. These are the ribs which are forming the costal margin. Uh, but what about the 11th and 12th ribs? 11th and 12th ribs are floating ribs and they are not coming to the anterior aspect and you won't be getting 11th and 12th rib in the costal margin. In the lower part, you can see the anterior superior iliac spine. These are the two anterior superior iliac spine. Then this will be the fold of groin and you can see the pubic tubercle. Then you have the pubic crest. Then you have the pubic symphysis. So this will be the lower limit and how far the anterior abdominal wall extend. So laterally, if you draw a mid axillary line on either side, a mid axillary line, mid axillary line means the line passing through the midpoint of the anterior and posterior axillary folds. So the mid axillary line will be the demarcating line between the anterior abdominal wall and posterior abdominal wall. So these are the main boundaries or landmarks of the anterior abdominal wall. Now coming to the cephoid process, you need to know the vertebral level of the cephoid process. This is roughly at the level of T9. Okay, so cephoid process lies at the level of T9. Then uh, this angle, this is known as the infrasternal angle or the subcostal angle. Now coming to the iliac crest, this is the most prominent uh, bony landmark which you can get here. And uh, what is the importance of the iliac crest? If you trace the iliac crest, this will be corresponding to the L4 vertebrae. What, do you, uh, what is the importance of knowing the L4 vertebrae, the vertebral level of the iliac crest? This, uh, when you do lumbar puncture for example, it is not easy to count the vertebrae. Isn't it? So, but, but at the same time, if you know the iliac crest, you can just refer the vertebral line against the iliac crest and you can identify the vertebra as L4. So, you can go between the L3 and L4 and L4 and L5. That is the importance of knowing the iliac crest. Then one another point which you need to know here is the tubercle, tubercle of the iliac crest. So, where will you look for the tubercle of the iliac crest? You can easily find the anterior of iliac spine. If you go roughly 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine, you will get an elevation and that is known as the tubercle of the iliac crest. So these are the important landmarks which you will get. Now uh, pubic symphysis we have already mentioned. 
it is actually the lower limit of the anterior abdominal wall and it is easily palpable and it lies at the level of coccyx posteriorly you have the coccyx and anteriorly you have the pubic symphysis so these are some of the important landmarks which you will be knowing now there are some important abdominal planes so we can say the plane passing through l1 you can call this plane as transpyloric plane it is actually an imaginary horizontal plane and um, what is the importance of this plane the there are ma many important structures passing uh, at the at the level of the transpyloric plane they are the pylorus that is the distal uh, tubular portion of the stomach then you have the fundus of the stomach on this side then you have the neck of pancreas then you have the hilum of kidney then you have the origin of the superior mesenteric artery then you have the formation of the portal vein like this and uh, there is also the root of transverse mesocolon so all these important events are occurring at the level of the l1 or the transpyloric plane it is also known as addison's plane so uh, you can also mark this plane as the midpoint of the line joining so above i'm no, i have not shown the jugular notch here here you will get the jugular notch you if you draw a line connecting the jugular notch to the pubic symphysis okay this is the pubic symphysis and above you have the jugular notch if you draw a line the midpoint of this line will be actually passing through the transpyloric plane okay so uh, transpyloric plane is the plane uh, which is passing through l1 and you can also calculate this point by keeping one hand breadth if you just keep one hand breadth here just below the siphi sternal joint that point also corresponds to the transpyloric plane and what about the costal cartilage the transpyloric plane will be intersecting at the ninth costal cartilage and what about the vertebral level l1 so these are the important points with regard to transpyloric plane this is this can be asked as a short note for the university exams and it can can be also asked for practical uh, as well now coming to the subcostal plane what do you mean by the subcostal plane this is again an imaginary horizontal plane which passes below the costal margin this is just below the costal margin and uh, what about the rib level you know the, the lowermost rib which is coming anteriorly will be the 10th rib and posteriorly which is the vertebral level it is the l3 vertebra so l3 vertebra 10th rib and lower margin of the uh, subcostal margin that is actually corresponding to the subcostal plane then trans umbilical plane this is actually again a transverse plane that passes through the umbilicus you can see the umbilicus or navel and it is actually lying between l3 and l4 so if you draw a plane through this you will get the trans umbilical plane and what do you mean by intertubercular plane or trans tubercular plane so this is actually passing through the tubercle of the iliac crest we have already mentioned the tubercle of iliac crest that is the point which is lying 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine so what about the vertebral level the trans tubercular plane the vertebral level will be l5 so uh, these are some of the important uh, landmarks which you should be knowing uh, with regard to the anterior abdominal wall so subcostal plane then you have to know the trans tubercular plane trans umbilical plane and trans pyloric plane uh, because if you know these planes it will be easy for you to divide the abdomen into quadrants or regions of abdomen we will be discussing about the regions and quadrants in the coming sessions uh, so uh, keep watching and please let me know whether it is useful for you we will be completing the topics one by one uh, if it is useful to you so thank you thanks for watching